Welcome to Talking Heads on USA Global TV, starring the one and only wonderful Dr. Jacqueline. It's a prestigious place where world-class influencers and experts meet, and where you'll find the most trusted advisors and coaches for all things in life and business. Visit usaglobaltv.com to sign up for our newsletter, get the value you need, and be first in line to learn about events and giveaways and other valuable content. Connect with us. Email Dr. Jacqueline at usaglobaltv.com to talk about how you can become part of USA Global TV. That's USA Global TV, where the doctor is always in. Hello and welcome to USA Global TV and radio. And yes, Dr. Jacqueline is in. It's not me, though. I am Mariska. Dr. Jacqueline is behind the scenes today. And I have the privilege to introduce our show, which is Talking Heads. So if you are not familiar with Talking Heads, it's a platform where experts and thinkers in their field come to help educate us on different topics from health all the way through to business and everything in between. So today, of course, it is my turn to give you a little bit of education. And for those of you that has been following this specific series, we're currently working on effective communication. For those that is new, you are more than welcome to catch up on any of the shows on USA Global TV or even the Talking Head shows that we have done in previous segments on our YouTube channel. And please subscribe, then you will get the most up-to-date shows. So, shall we jump into our education piece for today? As I mentioned, we are busy with effective communication and we are at lesson number four. I know it says three. For some odd reason, I didn't change it on the slides. So we are on lesson number four and we are looking at intentional communication. And this on intentional communication brings us to, as you can see, the fourth step. We First, we looked at the heart of communication that is around our purpose, our value, our meaning that we are bringing into the con conversation. Then we looked at our emotional connection within our conversation. Next, we looked at clarity. And today, it is around being intentional with our communication. So one overarching theme that we kept in the back of our minds throughout this process is the intention and attention that we pay in our communication. Now, being intentional with the way that we communicate helps us then to pay attention to the things that we are doing within that communication. And today we're specifically looking at intentional communication and how we can make sure that our communication is intentional when we're communicating because for us to be effective we need to have the right intentions and actually communicate it correctly so being purposeful deliberate and intentional in all our communications is something that we sometimes get reminded of, but most probably not often enough, because there is a lot of us that has a tendency to not quite always hit the mark when we are communicating. So what does intentional communication actually look like? So if you think about your communication, how many times do you actually think about what it is that you are going to say before maybe saying it? So having a preparation session up front. 
Now I know we do this when we are going into a boardroom and we need to do a presentation or when there is a very big meeting coming up. We have a tendency to prepare for those, but we don't always prepare for our normal day-to-day -day interactions, the interactions we have with our colleagues, the interactions that we have in our community, or especially the interactions we have at home with our family. So our intention is not always clear when we're having these different communications. And of course, not being intentional with our communication and clear with what it is that we need to do, we have the same problem this little blowfish has in the meme. So the blowfish says, I'm learning to establish healthy boundaries by clearly defining my limits. And then, of course, the jellyfish is wondering how you're doing that. And the blowfish blows itself up. So <laughs> needless to say, yes, well, then you exactly know where your boundaries are. But being aware, being self-aware about our way of communication or for the blowfish, its boundaries, it helps us not to do it and then fall into a trap, but rather become aware of what we are doing and avoiding any traps. So we want you to be effective communicators, right? And in order for us to do that, we need to have that self-awareness around how is it that we actually communicate. And the elements when we think about intentional communication that we are going to look at then for today is body language, words, and feeling. Now, when we think about body language, words, and feeling, you sort of think, okay, yeah, I get how body language can come into communication. Words definitely because we verbally speak for most of us. Um, not too sure how feeling might come into it. And this is what we will discover in our lesson today. Now, for all of these, we have previous lessons that you guys can go back to and have a look that is specifically on uh, body language, words and emotion that dives a little bit deeper into each of them and take other elements into consideration too. So for today, we are focusing specifically on intentional communication. So what does intentional communication look like when we think about something like body language? Now, say, for instance, I said that we are going to discuss three topics today. Now, as you can notice, I'm holding up four fingers, not three. Right. So immediately my body is saying one thing and my words is saying another thing. So when we think about our body language, what is important that we need to remember when it is our body language that we become aware of when we are communicating and for it to be intentional? So first off, the very first thing we need to know is what is it that we naturally do, right? Um, I remember I had a client not too long ago and their comment was, I really struggle with building new relationships because I have a, richie, a resting bitch face. And this is a great self-awareness to have because I know that this is the state of my face when it's resting, right? I'm not smiling, I'm not doing, I'm not using any of the muscles. So my face in rest looks a certain way. And for this specific individual, they looked a bit bitchy, which is not ideal when you want to integrate into new environments because normally when we have that sort of expression on our face, other people avoid us. 
Now, it might be that we might have a sad face or a angry face. My mom, for instance, um, I vividly recall one of my sister's friends came to visit and we were playing in the room and my mom came in and she asked whether we would have we wanted anything specific for lunch she was thinking of making us sandwiches and we were like yay sandwiches would be great and we each picked something that we wanted on our sandwich and when my mom left um, my sister's friend said your mom is very angry and my sister said no my mom's not angry what gave you that idea and she said she was frowning very angrily so my mom had a very per pertinent frown at that stage and that made her think that my mom was angry although that was the rest resting face my mom had at that stage so knowing exactly our default tendency body language wise and what happens with our face too so that's the very first thing then the second one is remember we broadcast our feelings we are continuously sending out signals about what it is that we are feeling and experiencing so if we feel nervous about something for instance we have a presentation coming up and we feel nervous about it it's being broadcasted right other people pick up on it they might not necessarily be able to put a finger on it but they pick up on the fact that we are nervous if we feel guilty about something it shows if we have something that we are very excited about if we feel very energetic about something very passionate about something it shows so understanding and remembering our feelings show up in our body language the whole time for most people that is not something that we cognitively control and Within the study of um, micro expressions, we know that most people cannot control their micro expressions. And a micro expression is that very fleeting millisecond expression that come across your face when you are experiencing a certain feeling within a conversation or a thought that came up for you and you're experiencing something specific. So understanding that it is going to be broadcasting all the time and making sure that, see, and this is where that intentionality comes in, right? Understanding what our intention is. So say, for instance, we are on a sales call and our intention or our thinking at that stage before going on to the call was, I really need this call because I need to get more clients in, I need to hit my targets, whatever the case might be. So we are feeling, the feeling that we are experiencing is already that of needing this person to say yes, right? So there's a neediness that is coming across already. There might be some fear or some anxiety that also comes across within this conversation because of where our thinking was prior to the conversation. So understanding that it is going to broadcast whether we want it to or not. So making sure that we are in the right spot and we'll get to the feelings bit in a bit in order for us to broadcast what we want to be broadcasting. And then other people are looking for congruence. As I said before, showing four and saying three is not congruent. So what happens is whatever body language we are sending out, so we might be, for instance, on the sales call and we need this person to sign up um, or we need this product to sell because we want to hit our target. And because of that feeling that's coming in, that's being broadcasted in our body language. We have this body language of um, needing this person to come and 
buy the thing or do the thing that we want them to do. And they pick up on it. Now, if our words say, for instance, that, oh, no, it's not a problem, take your time, immediately in their head, they're not getting a congruent message because our message our body is sending and our message our words are sending two totally different messages. So we need to make sure that it's a congruent message and actually flows into one another and not two separate messages that we are sending. So being intentional with our body language and understanding how all these other elements affect us when we are communicating. Then, of course, the next thing is the words. So our words matter. It really matters. And yes, there's a lot of messaging, especially when we go into some of the body language literature and look at the training within body language. They do note for us that there's a lot of that that comes across in our conversations. The thing that we also need to take into consideration is, yes, that is a very big part of it. And our words still carries weight. So the way that we come across in our interactions and what we want to say. So picking the words that we want to use within our conversation is really important because some words will land really well with certain people and other words might absolutely turn them away and they won't even bother listening. So understanding how the words impact the person or the people that we are talking to at that point in time. So on this slide, I have included a couple of questions for you to think through when you're thinking about the words that you want to be using in your communication. So um, firstly, we want to make sure that we are very clear on what we're trying to bring across. So our intention with this conversation and what we're trying to bring across, be very clear on that. What type of language am I using? Is it negative language? Is it bringing me, the situation, the other person down? Or is it upbuilding language that is rising me, the situation, and the other person up? So understanding what type of language we are using. Does the words and my intention actually match up? Right. So um, if I am angry and I want to communicate that I am upset about something specific, and I'm using bubbly words, they don't match, right? I am not going to say it's fantastic when I'm upset about something. That doesn't match, doesn't, doesn't want to blend together. So making sure that our words that we use match the intention that we have for that communication. How is the communication received by the other person? So Taking into consideration with words, now we are a international global community, right? And within our countries, we also interact with people with different backgrounds and different ways of thinking and different, all sorts of subtle differences. And because of these things, that's just a little bit different for each one of us, words has different meanings attached for each of us. For instance, the word success. When I say the word success, you will understand it different to your colleague. And you will understand it different to your boss. And your colleague and your boss will understand the word different. Because it has a different meaning for each one of us. So understanding what meaning a specific word might hold for a group or for the individual that we are talking to is really important. Um, what do I need to take 
into consideration about them that my to make sure that my communication is intentional so making sure that we understand the background making sure that we maybe understand the biases that might be coming up within our conversation um, making sure that we understand what certain words might mean to them and that certain words might have a different meaning to both of us so it might not have the same meaning to us both so making sure that those those ones especially if it is within our intention to have a specific outcome for our communication and that word is loaded with a lot of meaning for us making sure that that meaning is the same for them um, so and the meaning what meaning might my words carry for other people so all of those elements taking that into consideration when we are communicating to ensure that our communication is intentional and i know you've got this so next up then is feelings or feeling feeling or feelings and now when i'm speaking about feelings i am not talking only about about emotion um, i am talking about the physical sensations that we experience as well and hence why feelings so first off what's happening in our bodies what is physically happening in our bodies am i having a knot in my tummy am i having tinge shoulders am i pulling my shoulders up right what's what's happening in my body how am i feeling am i feeling tense in my shoulders am i relaxed can i actually am i standing very open am i standing very closed understanding what is happening in our body and how my body is feeling how i'm showing up as a human being then of course also the emotions now you will see that there is a little ladder on the side of the slide and at the bottom there's a little guy jumping up and down looking all upset and at the top there's a person sitting very zen like so the idea with this ladder is it it's there to remind you of a emotional ladder so normally for most of us the very bottom of the ladder is fear so when we're operating from a place of fear uh, it might be anxiety would go into fear overwhelm would send us into fear so it's a very low vibration emotion and it is really making us upset in some way or form so is this where we are when we are communicating if this is the place that we are at possibly our communication might not come across the same as when we are a lot higher up on the ladder so making sure we understand where we are at on the ladder when we are actually communicating and being intentional intentional about our communication and then also on the other hand looking at the other person or people i'm talking to or communicating with we are they on their ladder are they very low are they in the middle are they high up what is happening for them within the space of feelings are they hunched when we talk are they very upright when we talk does it look like they want to engage with the content or the communication that we are having or does it seem like they want to disengage and they're sort of standing back and they they don't want to interact with the communication or the conversation that we are having so understanding also where other people are on their little steps to make sure that when we see that they're going down we can stop remember this is about awareness and it's not only our own awareness but it's also awareness of our environment and the other people that we are communicating with so making sure that when we see something is happening 
and it's not exactly what we wanted to happen, we can stop and go, do you need more information? Is there something else that I can help make more clear about this? Maybe it's a word that was used and the meaning of the word might not be the same for both of us. What do you understand when I say success? Right? What meaning do you have attached to it? Or when I say drive? Or when I say conflict? What meaning do you have attached to that word that might give you a reaction where you are moving up or down your ladder? So taking that into consideration and thinking about while within the conversation, so before the conversation, where I am and where I want to be before I'm going into the conversation, and then during the conversation, looking and evaluating where I am, am I going up, am I going down, and where the other person or people in the room might be going. Are they going up or are they going down within their space? So this is the elements on feelings. And then, of course, we have a little table to make it nice and easy for us to have a small snapshot on being intentional about our communication, thinking about our body language, thinking about our words, and thinking about our feelings. So when we look at body language, what's my default? What's my intention? their reaction or their response to it and then what adjustments do I need to make to the way I'm showing up in order for my communication to be more intentional. Then looking at the words we have what words we want to be using that would actually um, communicate the intention of our thing that we are communicating and then what words do we want to avoid? We should not use them whatsoever. Then also thinking about, as I mentioned before, blind spots and biases. So we've done a lesson specifically on blind spots and biases. So if you're not sure what they are or how they show up, um, do go and have a look at that lesson. But within our words, making sure we understand what blind spots and biases might come up for us, as well as what might come up for the other person or the group. And then any other considerations that we need to take into account. So this might be um, background, some history. Um, it might be where we are at the moment, our current situation, their current situation. So all of these things within our words and the way that we communicate is really very important. And then, of course, on our feelings, in my body, what's happening? How am I feeling in my body? Right? How am I showing up? Then emotionally, how am I showing up? So as we have um, noted before in our awareness series, our emotional state can be changed by the way that we show up in our body. So if you're not sure how to do that, I refer you back to go and have a look at our awareness videos and it will explain to you how you can actually use your body to change the emotion that you are experiencing just by being in a certain posture. And then the emotional state, so how the other people are showing up in their space and how our communication is affecting their feelings and their state of being and then the adjustments again that might be required within the conversation that we're having. So before ending for today I want to leave you with Mr Bean. So as you guys can see on this wee little photo I assure you I have the best intentions and I'm not sure whether his face actually shows that. So I want to make sure that we communicate with 
the best intentions and intentionally so that we can make sure that our messages come across the way we intend them to come across. If there is anything on communication that you would like to ask me or there is more information that you would like, you are more than welcome to contact me on my email, which is mariska at journey to the number two discover.com or alternatively, you can always visit my website and please connect via LinkedIn. I would love to hear from you and find out where it is that we might be of service to you. And that brings us to the end of our Talking Heads show for today. And I would love to thank Dr. Jacqueline for a, another great show. And of course, a wonderful opportunity. If any of you are experts within your field and you would like to explore being able to use a platform like this to help others, do get into contact with Dr. Jacqueline. So you can do that going to the website for USA Global TV. Or alternatively, you can also email Dr. Jacqueline at Dr. Jacqueline at usaglobaltv.com. So please do get in contact with her. And I look forward to seeing you guys again next week. Bye.